Wanna be the office tyrant? Enjoy getting fired in disgrace. Back in the late 90s, I worked for a company that built and sold computers in bulk for large businesses. It was originally a Chinese firm with its headquarters based in Milpitas, California. The name of the company rhymes with Dupercom. They had satellite offices all around the United States. I was the lead technician and computer builder at one of the locations in South Texas. It was a relatively small business, about 20 or so people, with sales offices in the front and a huge warehouse filled with computer parts in the back. We had a total Karen of an office manager named Rosanna who was the definition of a petty tyrant. She attempted to rule that office with an iron fist and was a total bitch to everyone. She had the emotional maturity of a jealous, self-centered middle schooler and it showed. She liked to try to constantly exert power over everyone, and everyone in the office hated her. When her secretary had us build her a new computer for her home, Rosanna marched into our tech office the next day and demanded to know what kind of computer we built her, just so she could order one for herself that was more powerful, because it isn't right that my subordinate has a better computer than me. That's just one example of how petty and immature she was. We told her that we couldn't divulge that information because of customer privacy, so of course she went behind our backs and looked up the invoices to see for herself, because unfortunately, she had the necessary access to do that. Then, she demanded we build one for her that had a better processor, more memory, a bigger hard drive, etc. Then, she proceeded to take the computer home for herself and wrote it off at the company's expense. She didn't even pay for it like her secretary slash assistant did. Another example of her pettiness was towards me. Back then, hardware vendors used to come to us to display and sell their wares, because they knew that if we bought them, we were going to be buying them in bulk, and I mean thousands of units at a time. As the manager of the tech department, the regional manager expected me to be at those presentations to learn about the product and how it would integrate with the computers that my department was expected to build. On the day the vendors came to give their presentation, Rosanna demanded that I go to the warehouse during that time to help the warehouse manager put away stock. Wrong. I told her that as the manager of the tech department, I had to be at the meeting. She didn't like that. She then demanded, in front of the entire office and the vendors themselves, to go to the warehouse like a lowly assistant and help put away stock. I refused. Then she got irate and wanted to put me in my place in front of everyone because she couldn't stand to be told no. She had to maintain her dominance in the workplace. So, I simply walked out of the room, got on the phone, and called the regional manager. She yelled at me to return to where she was, she wasn't finished with me yet. I told her, yes you are, I have a phone call to make, while I was dialing. I got the regional manager on the phone and explained the situation, in front of her, the vendors, and the entire office. I put him on speakerphone. He demanded to speak with her and told her in no uncertain terms that I was to be at that presentation, with no ifs, ands, or buts. He told me that if she still refused, to call him back. You could have heard a pin drop in that office. The look on her face was priceless. Her face was so red it resembled a cooked lobster. Then I hung up the phone, crossed my arms, and waited, and you know what? She still insisted I go to the warehouse and help put away stock. This time, Roger, the sales manager, who was about 10 years older than her, intervened and told Rosanna that he would be calling the regional manager back if she didn't allow me to attend the presentation. She got even redder still, you could practically see the steam pouring out of her ears. She just screamed fine, and went to her office and slammed the door so hard it cracked the glass window in it. I attended the presentation, but forever after that, she was trying to get myself and Roger in trouble for any petty reason she could think of. She would even go so far as to turn on computer monitors in the tech room after I had left, then attempt to berate me the next day for forgetting to turn them off and wasting electricity. Just stupid petty little things like that. She would forge sales reports to try to make Roger and his team look bad and make everyone's office life miserable. Cue the pro-revenge. Everyone in the office was tired of this bitch's antics, so we formulated a plan. We had noticed that during the quarterly warehouse inventory report if inventory units were coming up short, say several processors or video cards or whatever were missing, she would zero those negative units out in the system and reprint the reports to make it look like there was never anything missing. She didn't investigate or try to get to the bottom of it, she just zeroed them out because she was lazy and didn't want those stolen or misplaced items to reflect badly on her performance as the office manager. About a week before the next quarterly inventory report, we purposefully hit about two crates, 60 units, of video cards so that the inventory would come up short. The warehouse manager printed out two copies of the inventory reports, keeping one for himself, before he presented the reports to Rosanna, he called the regional manager and told him that he might want to visit our location soon because he was concerned about items going missing in the warehouse. Rosanna, of course, as we predicted, zeroed out those missing units, and presented the reports to the regional manager the next day as if everything was just peachy keen. The warehouse manager then took the regional manager aside, showed him the real reports, and told him of Rosanna's butt covering shenanigans. Needless to say, she was very much fired within minutes after those reports were presented. The entire office watched in glee as a disgraced Rosanna cleaned out her office and made the walk of shame to her car. As soon as the main office door closed behind her, a spontaneous cheer shook the building, a loud cheer that Rosanna heard as she shamefacedly walked her box of belongings out to load into her car, tears of embarrassment streaming down her face. Her assistant slash secretary, a nice woman named Rosie, became the new office manager and the morale of the entire place improved dramatically. The regional manager, of course, ordered an investigation of the warehouse to try to find the missing items, and they magically appeared, having been misplaced behind a few pallets of monitors. He just shrugged his shoulders and said well, I'm glad that's been cleared up. I'm not going to rehire Rosanna though, she shouldn't have lied. Can't trust her to run this office anymore. And that was that. Good riddance of a bad Karen, and everyone in the office breathed a collective sigh of relief. Good times.